Welcome back to Project 613. Today we will learn three mitzvot that are interestingly all learned from one single verse, but nevertheless counted as three separate mitzvot in the count of 613. And this is in regard to the second tithe that we've been learning about. So just to recap, there are various tithes that a farmer has to give from his produce before he could benefit from the produce himself. First, he gives approximately 2% to the Kohen, which we've learned about, that's Teruma. Then he gives 10% to the Levi, this is known as the first tithe, Maeser Rishon. And then from the remainder, he gives another 10%, and this is called Maeser Sheni, the second tithe. And this is what we're learning about now, the second tithe, which is separated after he's given to the Kohen and after he's given to the Levi. What does the farmer do with this second tithe? He doesn't have to give it to anyone, he can keep it for himself, but as we've learned, there are certain restrictions. He has to take it to Jerusalem. It, he has to eat it only in a state of purity. He cannot eat it in a state of mourning, as we've learned in the previous days. Today, we have three prohibitions about this. And that is in regard to the fact that this second tithe needs to be eaten in Jerusalem. As we've already learned, now the Torah tells us there are three different prohibitions that the person would violate if he would eat the food from the second tithe outside of Jerusalem. The Torah tells us, Lo tuchal le'echal b'sharecha, it is forbidden for you to eat it in your own gates, meaning outside of Jerusalem. Ma'asar de'ganacha, the tithe of your grain, tiroshecha, and of your wine, v'yitzarecha, and of your oil. And from each of these three words, your grain, your wine, and your oil, Maimonides tells us, this actually comes to tell us there are three separate prohibitions that it's forbidden to eat the grain of the second tithe outside of Jerusalem, it's forbidden to eat the wine of the second tithe outside of Jerusalem, and it is forbidden to eat the oil of the second tithe outside of Jerusalem. And the fact that they are counted as separate prohibitions is learned specifically from the fact that the Torah goes out of its way to goes out of its way to repeat these three examples, even though we already know from elsewhere in the Torah that the second tithe is applicable to these three examples of grain, wine, and oil. The Torah seemingly over here could have just said, do not eat any of the second tithe outside of Jerusalem. But the fact that the Torah went and specified these three is to come and teach us that if a person eats all of these three, he would actually be violating three independent violations and would be punishable for each one of these things independently. An interesting thing about this mitzvah is that a person would, on, would only be punished for eating his second tithe outside of Jerusalem if he took the food in, in, into Jerusalem and then took it out and ate it outside of Jerusalem. But if he, let's say, just left his house with the food and he's on the way and starts eating from his food on the way to Jerusalem before he actually got there, although this would be forbidden, he would not be violating this mitzvah to be punishable for it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.